All right, we are live, yay. Uh, doing something new, this is Claude Diamond, by the way, for those of you who are coming on. Doing something a little new here today, uh, using an application called StreamYard. I've been experimenting with uh, different simulcasting um, types of um, applications, and we're on um, Periscope, we're on um, YouTube, we are on uh, Facebook and my main page and my other page uh, while waiting to see if some people come on. And I um, wonder if I can tell who comes on here. Well, we'll give it a little bit more time. I wanted to basically talk about different strategies. Uh, I think there's a lot of confusion in real estate, especially creative real estate. I've been doing creative real estate for over 30 years. Um, I love it. It's given me a great life, great lifestyle. Um, and um, there's so many different, hey, how you doing there, BK? Um, there's so many different strategies. And today I do a live uh, training call with my mentees uh, every Monday on Zoom. And one of the gentlemen we did a role play with, he was really focused on just lease purchasing. And um, I said, well, why are you just doing lease purchasing? If the prospect doesn't want to do a lease purchase, why don't you offer something else? Don't Why fight an uphill battle? Basically, he reiterated how uh, this prospect, there's no way they wanted to do a lease purchase. And I'll, I'll go through a lease, what is a lease purchase? It's a rent to own. So it's a great strategy. I've written several books on it, on lease purchasing. It's my favorite. It's a lot of leverage. It gives you all the control without the heavy investment liability. I'll talk about that in a minute. But so this one prospect said, Claude, I was speaking with someone today and they didn't want to do a lease purchase. There's no way. I said, OK, fine. Don't argue with them. Use the gut sales method, which is something else I talk about a lot and uh, find out what's their level of motivation. And they were fairly six or seven on a one through 10 scale. And we did a role play and I found out through uh, the question based system of guts that the property was free and clear. When I hear free and clear, I'll still make an offer. I'll give the prospect um, their full, I'll give them their full price if it's reasonable. All I want is terms. These are two words I use in creative real estate, price and terms um, all the time. And um, yeah, hey, um, let me know, by the way, in the text. Can you guys hear me okay? Somebody give me a little text. Let me know how it sounds, how it looks. Is it working good? It's my first time using... Uh, StreamYard here. You're kind of my beta testers, my gerbil. So I'm going to give you a lot of good free information, answer any questions. Uh, it's been a long Monday. Mondays are just the longest day of the week, aren't they? Um, so we did the role play. I found out the property was free and clear. And I right away made an offer to give them full price, save them real estate commission. I can close in seven to 10 days, if not sooner. Um, I can give them everything they want. I can give them a stream of, of monthly income, help them uh, reduce, substantially reduce their property, uh, their capital ta income taxes uh, by negotiating um, for them to hold the mortgage. In other words, when you do uh, owner finance, the property owner holds the holds their equity, you make payments. And that's where it gets a little tricky. You can you can do, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do principal only payments, which I love because it reduces the principal. Everything good? Thank you. Behind the lens, thank you. Thank you, REIs. I appreciate it. And you guys, if you have questions while I'm going through this, I'll be glad to answer it. So um, I made an offer for a full price, principal only payments, a little money down, monthly payments. Uh, I'm, I bought the property and now I have something so valuable. So uh, when you get somebody who says free and clear, oh, my God, give them what they want, but get control of the property. You're eliminating the bank. And of course, you always want to make it assignable. And I think I'll talk about assignability first before I go into the five strategies. Any contract you use, except for maybe cash, you want to make that contract assignable. In all my con control is huge. You're right. Bottom line. If you can make a contract assignable in my contracts, I'm a recovering attorney. OK, it's a big deal. And um, all my contracts have an assignability clause, and that's the ability to transfer, or convey your rights to a third party, to somebody else, to sell, convey, transfer, hypothecate, break it apart. This is the most powerful clause you can have in your contract, assignability. This means that if I do a rental 
just simple rental. I'm going to rent a condo from somebody. I can sublet that condo. I can sell my contract for my three-year, say I get a property for $1,000, but I know it's worth $1,500. I can take that contract and sell it to somebody else for cash, or I could sublet it for $1,500 a month, pocket $500 a month, or I could just sell the contract, let's say for $5,000, and they move in the property and they get a much better contract. I can do this with options and everything. Hola, amiga. It's, oh, Rance, how are you? More importantly, how is that beautiful wife of yours? How is Brandy doing? How are the kids? Glad you joined on board. Thanks a lot, guy. Um, you know, we're going to Hawaii again in January. Maybe it's time for a little um, Mai Tai renewal. Um, assignability, though, is the most important thing. Um, you want that in every contract you do. So let's go over the basics. Um, there's a lot of gurus. Everybody's got a different, you know, shiny little object strategy. I stay with the five basic strategies. The one word I want you to learn um, today is basically leverage. If I can leverage, can I control somebody else's expensive asset with a piece of paper, a darn piece of paper, Okay. Um, and can I take that property? Can I rent it? Can I can I live in it? I got a home in Colorado that I least purchased and then I purchased and it worked out great. So maybe it's for me. Maybe I'll sublet it. Maybe I'll sublet it with an option. Maybe I'll wholesale it to another investor or I'll retail it to somebody who wants to live in the property. I'll get into that in a moment too. This is like a little mini uh, webinar here. You guys get it. Uh, for free because I, I'm just testing out this system. I would love to, okay, most of you seem to be all on uh, YouTube. That's interesting to me right now. Oh, wait, we got one person on Facebook, Buy Smart Wholesaler. Okay, good. That's Rance. My favorite top, my favorite strategy, it's how I got started, was the lease option. I had a mentor and he said, Claude, it's so easy to rent. Why do you want to buy properties? And I bought a lot of properties in the beginning. I had enough money to buy three, four properties. Guess what happens when you're buying properties like a mad dog? Okay, you're, you're going to run out of cash. You're going to run out of credit. And then you have to get creative. And that's what we're talking about, creative real estate. So my um, mentor used to control properties by leasing them with an option, rent to own, lease purchase, whatever. It's all semantics. It's all the same thing. It's a rental agreement with tied in with an option agreement. This is where some people get it wrong, by the way. An option is not a sale. It's just a contractual right to a sale if you choose to exercise that right. Now that sounds like real fancy jargon, it's not. It just means that I have a choice whether or not to buy it or not. So if I buy a property, uh, I get a three-year contract and I buy a property and I move into it, it's a rent to own, and I buy it for 100,000, let's say. And let's say in three years, it goes up to 150,000. It's here in, I'm in San Diego right now, crazy California. You know what $150,000 will get you? A cardboard box behind the Walmart, no view either. Okay, but if it goes up to 150 and I'll say, wow, I, I have a 50,000 potential equity in that property. I'm going to exercise my option. So I go to the bank, I get my 10, 20% down, I buy the property, get a new mortgage. That's how you protect yourself. Don't just lease, lease with an option, okay? And that's the beauty of it. Now I could take all to that lease option. Um, I can do something called sandwich leasing, which was my favorite strategy. So I'd find a property from someone else, Some, the quote unquote, what does every guru at every seminar say? The motivated seller. And I would get that property under contract. I'd love to get it for three to five years. That seems to be the magic place there. And I'd lock in the price, let's hypothetically $100,000. i would lock in the rent, let's say 1000 a month. Okay. And um, now I'll take that property and I know I can rent it out for 1500 a month. But I'm not going to rent it out for five years. I'm going to rent it out for one year at a time. And I'm not going to rent it out for $100,000. i am going to pop up the price a little bit, reasonably, whatever the market will absorb at the time. Let's say uh, I'll make it from $100,000, which is my contract, and then I'll find a tenant buyer and I'll raise it up to one twenty, dollars And uh, I'll raise the rent to from $1,000 that I'm paying the owner to $1,500. So now I make $5,000 a month. And 5000 a month times 12 months because I'm only going to do a one-year contract. Pay attention to that part. Ah, thank you. The great diamond. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about that, with a sandwich lease, 
Now I make 6,000 a year, 500 a month times 12. I have control of the property. If the tenant buyer does, buys the property, I'll make another 19, 20,000. What I say, 120? I'll make 20,000 on the back end. But here's where it's fun. I can actually make option money in the beginning. So say I gave the owner first and last month on the property, but now somebody wants to move in. I want to get at least, um, let's say five to 10%. Let's say 5%. So I get 5,000 up front. I recoup what I paid the owner. So a couple thousand goes in the hip national bank here, makes Mrs. Diamond very happy. And I'm making 500 a month. Guess who's paying the taxes? Owner. Oh, I'm glad you like that. Great. Guess who's paying the taxes? The owner. I don't own it yet. Owning isn't always cool. Sometimes renting is better, but renting on steroids, rent it with an option to purchase. And then you don't have to pay the taxes, the insurance, you don't have to do the lawn maintenance and everything else. You don't have to, you don't have to pay for any of these things because the owner still owns it. They're still responsible. They're still responsible. You're just a smart tenant. You've liked to locked in the price and terms. And remember that assignment clause that I spoke about. So here you have all this beautiful leverage. I'm controlling a property with what it costs to rent. Uh, uh, but I and I have all the control. The owner can't rent it to anybody else. They can't sell it to anybody else. If you do your paperwork right, they can't even refinance it. I can live in it. I can rent it. I can rent it with an option and I can uh, take the paperwork. I can call up another investor and sell it to that investor for X amount of dollars. That's called an assignment fee. That does not apply to the contract. It is a separate and distinct. It's like selling a car. You're just selling that pink slip and you're getting X amount of dollars for that, that entitles them to the ownership of the car. So we can assign that contract. Uh, I can assign it to a, um, a, and that's called wholesaling. I call it arbitrage. And I love, I do a lot more arbitrage today than I do sandwich leasing, by the way, it's easy. I don't have to collect the rent. I don't have to manage it. I don't have to do anything. And I'm good at this. So if your talent is that you're good at finding properties, all you, all you have to do is get it under a contract and assign it, sell it to somebody else. That's wholesaling. That the other strategy is that you might want to retail it. Also, an arbitrage, um, uh, 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 an arbitrage um, strategy, where basically, where all you have to do is just um, sell it to a family that there's always a family that you can go to them and say, Hey, would you like an opportunity to move into a house today that you could buy tomorrow or buy in two, three years, whatever you negotiated in the contract. I have a contract here for three years. Um, it's a thousand a month. You don't have to pay me 1500. If I like, if I sandwich leased it and the price is locked in at one, the price is locked in at a hundred thousand and a thousand a month, you can move in this for 36 months, which is the length of the original contract that I did with the owner. And I'll sell you this contract for let's say $10,000. You don't have 10,000, but you have 4,500, fine. Put the 4,500 down, pay me 450 a month for the other 10 months or whatever the math is, and we're all set, boom. So now, not only did I find the property, but I sold it, made 10,000 on it, they have to, they move in, they enjoy it because I have that right of assignability. I got that 4,500 up front. So I recoup any small investment I made on the sandwich lease. And now I have a note for 450 a month for whatever, another uh, 10, 11 months. That's what you can do if you understand leverage, you understand lease purchasing. That's one strategy. Okay. That was a mouthful just for that one. Um, another one is, um, Owner finance. I talked about that before. You get an owner with a lot of equity or free and clear, as we like to call it. Don't argue with them. They don't want, they may not want to do um, a sandwich lease. They may not want to do a lease option. Give them what they want. Mr. and Mrs. Pro, here's where I, I mix in a little gut selling. Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, suppose I gave you your full price. You don't have to pay. I'm not a realtor, I'm a private investor and, and, and um, consultant. Uh, you don't have to pay me a real estate commission. I'll give you your asking price because it's fair and reasonable for the market. The only thing I want from you is terms. I will give you 5,000 down. I will give you 1,000 a month. You want 1,500? Fine. I'll give you 1,500 since you were shrewd enough to ask for more money, but I want it all applied to the principal. So now I have a property. They're the bank per se. I don't have to put 20% down, go through the whole thing. 
And now I have a property that I can sell to somebody else with no bank. Imagine you could advertise a property, owner finance, easy qualification. Okay, can you, you know how hard it is for some people to qualify, but they do have cash. So now I have this property, let's say it's five years with a balloon. I put 5,000 down It's and I'm paying the owner 1,500 a month and all that money is going to pay down the principal. In five years, that property would have $75,000 paid off the purchase price. You see the method to my madness? Then there also might be appreciation on that property. So if I rent it out to somebody for, let's say, $1,500 or $1,550 a month, I make a lousy $50 a month, but they're pay but I'm just renting it. They're going to pay down all, they're going to pay down all that principal. And in five years, I get a property with 75 to maybe 100, 150,000 equity. Somebody else paid my bill. That's what you could do. You could also, as I said earlier, assign it and sell it to another investor or sell it to a family that wants to move in. You just add an assignment fee to it. And a bill and a property like that, I would get at least oh, 15 to $25,000. If they didn't have all the cash, I'd get at least half down and finance the other half with or without interest. It's up to you. I generally do without interest. I make it real easy for people, real simple. Um, how do you explain this to the owner on your first initial conversation when you make this offer to them? You, good question. Uh, Ani and Chantel are here. God, you got Ani and Chantel. Put your put your YouTube link in there. I want people to watch those amazing videos you guys do. This cute couple, cutest couple in Phoenix does an amazing, they're both the best realtors in Phoenix, and they do these amazing videos where they go to all these different foodie places, you know, the, um, well, you know, like the uh, KFC, the, the two donuts with the big piece of chicken in the middle, they, they go to places like that, and they're still so thin and healthy looking. Anyway, well, check, uh, you guys put your link in there so other people can see uh, what, um, what you talk about on your YouTube page. Um, when I go to an owner, I tend to use the gut sales method. If you guys, um, if this is your first time hearing of me, go to, um, here's my here's my little link here. I'll put it in for a second. Go to ClaudeDiamond.com. Watch my free videos. Get my free book. I've got a ton of stuff there. Um, just go to that web page and um, you'll see, you'll get a lot of stuff for free there. And um, you'll learn a lot about lease purchasing and more importantly, the gut sales method. Uh, let me get rid of that banner here. I don't know. There we go. Um, and you want to learn to be totally, I, I'm real upfront with people. I don't give a presentation uh, until I've qualified them. I don't uh, beg for the order. I am not subservient to the prospect. And I basically um, don't um, use a script. Scripts are caca in my world. I go to the prospect. Hey, what's the problem? Beautiful property. Uh, why isn't it sold? Why don't you just give it to a realtor? And I try to turn the, I basically try to turn the, the prospect into the salesperson. So I'll say to them up front, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, would you like to, um, would, uh, would you like to sell your property today? I'm an investor. I'm looking for a property. I need one of two things or a hybrid. I need price or terms. I have, I, I can make you an offer right now. Send you a contract this evening. And we can get this property off your back if you like. Or I can get off the phone. Um, you can just fire me. Are you comfortable with that? Can we move forward today? Would you like to do a deal right now? I'm so I'm going to be very transparent, very upfront. I'm going to say that I'm ready to do a deal immediately. I'm trying to make them very emotional. Um, when I explain to an owner that I want to control their, that I want to do you um, buy their property, I'm going to find out what's the most comfortable strategy. Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, if you want, I can, uh, I'd like to rent your property for a few years and then have the opportunity to buy it. If you have um, very low or no uh, mortgage right now, you, what's your, if you don't mind me asking, your mortgage, is it uh, low, medium, large, uh, free and clear? If you don't mind me asking, because my offer will be dependent on that information you share with me, which is public anyway. Oh, it's a very low mortgage. It's almost paid off. I'll tell you what. What's your price? If it's what's your best price? I'll tell you what. I'll give you that price if you're willing to hold that mortgage for 60 months, five years, principal only payments. I'll send you a contract today and we're done. Would you like that, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect? Problem solved right away. What do you think? Oh, you want to think about it? No, you're not allowed to think about it. I'm going to send you a contract. I'm going to explain it with a video attached to that contract in my email. And then 
you can contact me. You can get back to me at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning on Zoom or, oh, you have an iPhone? Then get back to me on FaceTime, okay? Boom. I I make offers in the front, and I hope that helped you. Um, who made that question? It was a good one. MLB. That's Michael Buckles and um, Michael Buckles in Atlanta. Michael, I tend to be very direct, very assertive, but not a bully. I get right to the point. I'm not. And as Ani or Chantel or both uh, said, I'm not subservient to the prospect. I am the doctor in the room. I am the authority. I'm the guy signing a contract for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why do I have to? You know, kiss their tuchus. Why do I have to? Why do I have to be subservient to them? I'm glad you got my book. Excellent. Um, Audience Chantel, put your put your link in there for your YouTube page if you like, because you have. I love your YouTube's. They always make me hungry. You have to. Audience Chantel, you have to go to Popeyes and tell me what that that chicken sandwich that everybody's talking about is. Why is that such a big deal right now? Um, Let's talk about some more on finance. So we've covered lease purchase. We have covered subject two. There's another one called um, basically uh, owner finance. That's where, or subject two, excuse me, where we basically take over the payments on the existing mortgage. Hopefully it's a small or medium mortgage. We take over the payments and the prospect holds off on their equity. In other words, um, it's a, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollar property. Let's say they only owe twenty five thousand dollars. The payments are five hundred dollars a month. I'll go to the prospect, say, you know what? I'll give you pro- what's the best price you can give me. I'd like your property for three years. I will take over the monthly payments, the PITI of five hundred a month. Uh, we can arrange that legally through my attorney, um, through a third party, and we will do a contract for that. And oh, you want some of your equity payments now? I will give you an extra 250 on top of that 500 every month for, for, for the three years. And that will go to the principal only. And your house is sold today. Can we do business? And I'm going to send them a contract basically taking over their mortgage payment. I tend to keep these subject to the existing mortgage because most mortgages have what is called an acceleration clause. I don't want to make this a, a five, 10, 20 year contract. I can. But I tend to want to I want to keep it very short because there is a due on sale and an acceleration clause in these things. So if I'm going to sign it to somebody else, I don't want to be responsible for them getting into trouble with the bank accelerating the loan or something like that. This is a little legal legal lingo I'm talking about right now. Um, I'll bring that up at another time, okay? Because I don't want to take up too much of your time today. Um, I want to. Um, so that's what we've talked about, lease purchase, owner finance, and subject to. Now, the best strategy in the world, a lot of the gurus won't tell you this. And then after this, I'm going to give you my super secret strategy. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you the best money-making strategy that no guru, no, no educator talks about. It's consulting. Cash. Before we do that, let's talk about cash. There's nothing better than cash. If you're making money in your business and you have multiple streams of cash flow and notes and rentals and you have more money than you need to live on, live modestly. That My wife and I, we, we had all these properties and we were still renting a little, um, honey, what was it? The two bedroom? We had a two bedroom, went to a three. We went from a two to a three bedroom. We're still renting. We're owning all these properties, uh, but we're still renting and we're keeping our overhead very, very low. Um, absolutely. Hey, it's the home on lease purchase or even event should the tenant buy honors. Okay, very good. Due on sale. Yep, absolutely. Um, so when you have cash, cash is king. You've heard that expression. When I go to prospects, I'll say, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, seller, I'm ready to do a deal tonight. I am pre-qualified and I have cash. I can close on this deal, but I need good, but I need a great price. And maybe if you don't, if you want full price, God bless you. It might take you another six, 12, 18 months. You didn't sell it this summer and it's still on the market. How would you, could you imagine you woke up tomorrow morning, you have a contract and it's sold. How would you feel about that? Um, I have a note here from my good friend, Sean, the legend Osby, lease option consulting. How do anyone is talking about it? You're right, Sean. Absolutely. We're going to get to that in a minute. When you have cash, so you want to build your business where you have cash available, either through banks or here. I'll show you one of my, I got a heck of a lot of credit. I got a lot of credit cards here. If I took all these credit cards, 
okay, I could raise a couple hundred thousand dollars very quickly. If see you, and I'm telling you this because, in you know, when you're involved in this business, you come across great deals. Sometimes you're you're if you're doing it day to day, you're sooner or later you're going to find that five hundred thousand dollar property, and a couple's getting divorced. There, something happened uh, tragically, maybe, but, but they want to get out of this property fast. Will you have the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars today so they can get out of Dodge? You better prepare for this day. It will eventually come. Have any of you ever had this situation where you had the, the super duper deal of a lifetime? You were going to make five or six figures and you needed cash today. And that You're still going to do your due diligence. You're still going to use escrow, title search and everything else. But did you have the cash available? Because I'm telling you right now, that opportunity will come up. Be prepared. So have a line of credit. Have a HELOC. Have a bunch of credit cards. So I don't really advise that. Uh, that's very for very. That's a dangerous strategy, and it's only for short term. And you know what the hell you're doing, type financing. Okay, you don't want you don't want to run a couple hundred thousand dollars on a bunch of credit cards unless you know the property, you know the neighborhood, you did your due diligence, and you know you're going to make five to six figures on this property in the short term. I don't like gambling, okay? But once in a while, this is a risky business. So you got to be prepared with cash, okay? Or marry a woman with much uh, much more money than you and has a much better credit line. Isn't that right, dear? Yeah, that's, right. That's, right. that's right. Behind every successful man is usually a smarter, more exhausted woman with much better credit. <laughs> Truth be told, right? Your Uncle Claude is transparent here. Uh, the thing about it is, um, you know, you be prepared for that day. If you're just getting started and you're watching every penny, this is cash is not your strategy yet. But someday you're gonna you're gonna have a couple deals, you're gonna build up your capital fund, be ready for this day. This is the lottery, winning ticket lottery day. You gotta be prepared. And you're not going to have much time. And you're going. These people want to act fast, and you're going to say sold. You're going to do the contract for that hundred uh, for that half a million dollar property for two fifty today. You're going to put it in the escrow. You're going to put some money down. You're going to use your attorney, your title company, whatever, and you're going to make yourself a quarter million dollars on this property. It can be done. It will be done. Sooner or later, you're going to find this deal. So be prepared with cash. Let's move on. Sean had that great question. Lease option consulting. Oh, wait, there's a question above. If the home is on a lease purchase or even an option, should the tenant buyer obtain? Let's show this question. A good one. If the home is on a lease, and I'll get to yours, Sean, right next. If the right next, uh, next, right after this one. <laughs> if the home is on a lease purchase or even an option, should the tenant buyer obtain renter's assurance, or will that trigger the due on sale? You know what? One of my three favorite words, I don't know. I can, You know, anything can trigger the due on sale. But in my experience, this is my opinion now, this is subjective, okay? This is not law. In my experience, when the bank is getting paid on time, they don't care who's, who's paying it. They just care that they're getting paid. But, you know, after Dodd-Frank and everything, there's a, they're a lot more stringent. They are subject to greater fines and things like that. I tend to keep these deals shorter. The rental insurance, that's an interesting question. I really don't know. The more things that are filed on the property records, liens, HELOCs, um, things like that, the more chances that red flags are going to come up to the bank. So the logic dictates that the less stuff you do that shows up on the property records, the, le the, li the less likelihood that the bank is ever going to accelerate or do it. The main thing is, are they getting paid on time? That, in my experience, that's all they care about. I hope that, that was kind of a weaselly answer, but it was the best they could come up with, I'm sure. Tough question. Man, it's 512 here, and I haven't had my, I haven't had my first beer yet, dear. Uh, I don't know. Can can you call up Uber Eats to deliver a beer to me or something? Um, geez, what kind of beer should I have? Can I have a beer with you guys? Who wants a beer with Claude? Um, oh gosh, let me think. It's going to cost me this. You always pay. You always pay. Um, grab me one of those Ballast Point beers, please. Please, I would say please. Oh God, I got to beg. I, I'm teaching these good people not to be subservient, but what are you doing to me? Nothing. Okay. Just <laughs> do you do a, could you do options on a duplex? Sure. I like single family homes. Um, 
uh, more than anything. Why? Because they're just easier to turn over than a duplex. Duplexes are a little bit more complicated. Sure. What can you do it? Of course, you can do it on a yacht. You can do it option on anything. I'll, Pablo wants a mom. Pablo Medina wants a beer too. One for Pablo uh, on there. Um, let's go to, um, I want to go to that question from um, my uh, my friend there, uh, Sean, lease option consulting. Let's let's talk about that for let's talk about that for a second. Lease option consulting is a something. You know, I think we I think we leave a lot of money on the table. I, we talk to all these people. We do all this marketing, and some of you guys doing a lot of marketing. You're talking to people. They don't want to do anything uh, with a third party. Okay, they want to do it themselves, but they still have a problem. They, they, they'd like to do a lease purchase. They'd like to do owner finance, but they don't know how. The property could be in East Bumble. Um, um, I got to pick a state or I won't offend somebody. Um, I can't think of one. East Bumble, uh, Okinawa, okay? Nobody here from Japan today. Um, and, that, and you don't want to fly to Okinawa today. So what do you do? You go to that pro you go to that prospect. Say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, why don't you set this up? Suppose I told you there was a way you could take your property, get your full price over market price, have total control, have the prospect do all the um, maintenance on the property. We can put that in the contract. By the way, you'll need a special contract. And if you go to an attorney, it might cost you thousands of dollars. Um, but you could set this up as a rent to own, get your price, save a real estate commission. Sorry, Ani and Chantel. And um, you could have everything you wanted. You wouldn't be interested in wanting to learn that today, would you? Oh, well, I could provide you with the contract. I could advise you with consulting advice. We could set up a few appointments and I will charge you a reasonable flat fee. So, and you can do this all yourself and save yourself thousands, tens of thousands. You wouldn't be interested in doing that today, would you? And that's what you can, and that's what you can do with consulting. So you get a property, it's too far away. You get a seller. They don't want to do anything creative. They're a little short with you on the phone. I had a lady like that with me today. Oh my God, she was ready to rip out my jugular. And I was sweet. I was your Uncle Claude. I was sweet as can be. Ma'am, are you mad at me? Ma'am, is it time to switch the decaf? Why are you are you having she got a lot of phone calls from a lot of bad sellers? Or she was just nasty. Or she was just a nasty um, can I say that? That's, oh, that's pumpkin. Oh, this is oh pumpkin beer. Yes. But here's the other one. I got this is a pumpkin. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. 33 years of marriage, yes. 35 years and she, of togetherness it's only, and 49 years of knowing each other. That's right. A long time. There's only two rules. She's always right. She's always right. <laughs> yes. And, and a three-minute timer. You guys know the inside joke on that. This is my that this is from Ballast Point. A little beer here, a little beer break here for Pablo and anyone. Anybody else want a sip of beer? This is my favorite beer. It only comes out in September, October, November. It's pumpkin beer from Ballast Point. Look at that. It's cold to the touch. Look at that. It's frozen glass. To your health, Lahayam, salute, I'm prosit, uh, whatever. Uh, um, what's the Japanese? Lahayam, what's the Japanese uh, one? Uh, um, salute. Uh, no, that's Mexican. Um, the Japanese have a good one. Kim, Kim, no, not kimchi. That's Korean. Um, <laughs> Kampao, something like that. Here's to your health. Oh, Sean, I said hi. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's good pumpkin beer. Oh, yeah, baby. Thank you, dear. Um, Claudia said to say hello to Sean. So, Sean and Michael. And Michael. And everybody. And Ani and Chantel and all oh, our friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Ani and Chantel say, hey, Claudia. Um, let's see. We got some questions here. Let me get to your questions. Not, not had a beer in a month. Oh, my gosh. Why not? Beer is good for you. Beer is the Mother Nature's own health food. <laughs> um, so, but you, what did you switch to? What did you switch to? Wine or tequila? Anyway, these are the five strategies um, that you want to be ready when you're talking to people. You want to be ready with cash, lease purchase, owner finance, subject to or consult. You need the right paperwork for it. Um, you want to make all your contracts, uh, especially lease purchase, owner's finance, subject to, you want to make them all assignable. Always have your assignability clause in your agreements. Um, you always want to um, make sure 
uh, do your deals uh, through, oh, Biggie, do your deals through a corporation or LLC. Don't make yourself personally liable, especially if you're in a nice free and clear home here in San Diego. Don't do it personally. Do it through an LLC that has no assets or an S or a C Corp, whatever fits the boat. It's true. Absolutely. Um, I've been on here for how long? Where's the time on? I'm experimenting with StreamYard here. It's a, it's a multitasking. We're actually broadcasting at the same time on Facebook, Periscope, and on uh, YouTube. And it seems to be working pretty good. I'm really glad that you guys can ask your questions. Do you have any more questions before I go? Do you want to, or should we just sit around and watch me drink beer? It's not a bad thing to do. Mm. Oh, oh, Awning, you got to take a sip. Oh, is that good? This is marvelous. Oh, my goodness. Staff of life. Oh, well, uh, well, Chantel will get a, a nice glass of Chardonnay. What was that wine we opened last night? Well, that's Dionysus from uh, Orphillo. Dionysus. That was the god of pleasure, the Greek god of pleasure, I believe. Sparkling white wine. It was a sparkling white wine because they can't call it champagne. And it was from Orphilla Vineyard. And God, was that a good glass of champagne. Oh, my God. With no assets, you say, Claude, liquid. I'd say... Always do a deal where you want to protect your personal liability, your home, your savings, any assets, that hard assets that you have are valuable. Put it in a LL, separate LLC, okay, just to protect yourself. Um, and keep that LLC separate. Don't commingle funds. Keep it as a separate business entity. File your taxes on it. Do your annual corporate reports, whatever is required in your state. Um, sorry, just joins. What did I miss? You missed a lot of good stuff. You missed the five ways to do real estate. You missed assignment clauses. You missed, oh my God, you, watched, you missed me drinking beer. Um, I don't know if this is recording and saved. Um, I will find out when this is done. This is my first time doing this. Uh, God bless beer and you. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> beer, beer and Claude in that order. I like, I like that. Um, I love real estate. Um, you never stop learning in this business. The trouble is, I think there's too many people with too many, they make it, they overwhelm you with too many different strategies, too many shiny objects. I, My wife and I be, may, run a very successful business. Uh, I work from home. I used to have an office. Now I just work from my homes. I put all my money back into my own properties. I never take vacations. I just change homes. That, 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 <laughs> it's true. And pay down the homes as quickly as possible. I'm going to do a video this week. We paid off a mortgage this week. Do you know what is one of the 10 best feelings? Here, drum roll. What is one of the 10 best feelings in the world? We know what number one and two and number three is drinking beer. But what is one of the best feelings in the world? It is paying off a mortgage getting rid of a mortgage on an investment property, free and clear, all that lovely money from your tenants or uh, comes into your pocket. It's like an annuity. It's your retirement fund. It'll pay for your car. It'll pay for your, your health care. Uh, it'll keep you free. What do we all want? Why do we all talk about real estate so much? We want freedom, baby. Freedom. It's, tell me how Ani and Chantel, um, Michael Buckles, everybody, how wonderful is it to, to work from home? How many guys, how many people here have had shitty jobs with shitty bosses, right? Isn't isn't working from home through creative real estate one of the most one? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the congratulations. Isn't working from home one of the best things ever? Um, cheers, Claude. Good to see you, bud. Glad you and your lovely lady are doing well. Thank you. It's very nice of you to say that. Um, it's, uh, I love working. I'm a lousy employee. I don't think I could work for anybody anymore. I'd be horrible. Um, I like to do things my own way. You know, not that I ever do, but if I want to sleep late and I don't have any appointments that day, if Claudia and I want to take off a Wednesday and go to the San Diego Zoo or go on a tour of all the wonderful breweries in San Diego, just walk on the beach, we can do that. Not that I do that very often because I take my business seriously and I enjoy it. But the freedom, I don't know how to put it in the words, the freedom of your own business through creative real estate, knowing these strategies and being superb at sales. And that's something I'm going to do in another live video. Um, it is a beautiful thing. It is free. <laughs> it is great, Michael. It is. Michael, you know, Michael Buckles has been uh, 
uh, uh, Michael, you've been a what, four or five years in real estate and you started off with, it was tough for you, I remember. And here you are, you're in Atlanta, you're doing great deals, you're, support, you're helping your mom and dad, you're a good man. Uh, I like uh, real estate is the best, it's the best business in the world. Why? Because everybody needs a place to live. It's the necessity of life. And I don't care if the market, every people, have, I work five hours a day from anywhere. Yeah. You get more done at five hours. Now, now today was a long day for me. Here it is five o'clock and I've been on this desk since nine. Okay. So it's a nine to five or today. Okay, you some days are two, three hours, some days are five hours. It just depends. I can do whatever I want. I can even take a power nap, which I occasionally do. Um, I can talk to lovely people and drink pumpkin beer from Ballast Point. The thing about it is you can make enough money. You can live like a human being. You can pay your bills and you can have that freedom thing going. And to me, the freedom, I mean, life is short. You want to enjoy it under your terms. The, the, my definition of hell, before I go, is doing, can you imagine getting up? We've all done it. I've done it. I got to get up every day, put on a suit and tie, get in a car, sit in damn traffic and pay four or five dollars a gallon. That's what it costs here in California. And then go to a job, sit in a cubicle or something with a company that couldn't care less. They get hard times. They lay me off. They fire me. They pay me just enough to keep me, keep my family in poverty. And I have to take orders from people with halitosis and flatulence. I just threw that in there. Hope you're not eating dinner right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know they don't appreciate it. I'll take that out of the. I'll take that out of the recording later. Um, the thing, is, <laughs> I, Ani and Chantel, I get to wear my Leo to a leopard print speedos. Yes, good man. Make money at the same time at home. Very sexy. I got a bad. Vi I got a nice visual here. <laughs> Maybe it's Chantel in the Speedos. I don't know. <laughs> but I think oh, I sent that. The thing is to just live life under your, seriously, to live life under your own terms, to just have fun, to make money from home, giving good phone. Like the sign says, I have that sign up there for a reason. Uh, you know, just to talk to nice people. And you get some nasty little, you get some shit birds too sometimes. But to talk to nice people. And I can't wait to fire my boss. It, that, is, that is one of the best feelings in the world. But, I, but before you fire your boss, I'm going to be Uncle Cla uh, Grandpa Claude here, not Uncle Claude. Make sure you're, you're ready. Make sure, you have, make sure you have six months of income in advance. Okay. I don't go for these gurus to say, just quit your job and get started. No. Have a plan like a mature adult. Make sure you have at least six months of income so you can so you can learn your trade, practice your trade, get strong at it. And then you're not worried about money. You got family, you got responsibilities, you got bills. You don't want to go from poverty to on um, the street. Okay. We got enough people. What did I hear yesterday? There's 60 in California, 60,000 people living on the street. Why are we why aren't we taking these people and educating them in free enterprise? Okay. We're giving them a, we're giving them fish instead of teaching them how to fish. Let's teach them how to let's teach them how to how to get out there. Anybody can go out, out there today and sell stuff. If you know sales and you're good at persuasion and you don't sound like the typical boring salesperson, you can make all the money in the world. You can you can make a more than enough money to live decently if you really want to sell the right product that you're pa passionate about, a product or a service. Then your income possibilities are unlimited. They really are, and you can enjoy life under your terms. You want to take a day off. You want to go out to dinner with your lovely uh, with your s special other person. You can you can want to drive a nice, safe, comfortable car. You live life under your terms. So when you have your last day on the planet, you said, hey, like Frank Sinatra, I did it my way and I have no regrets. I wish you all well because nobody deserves success more than you good people. Take care. Thanks for joining me. You guys are great. Bye-bye.